Here is the situation. We are on foot and we have arrived at a huge body of water that looks something like this right here. And we are approximately right there. Now we have two choices. One is that we hike all the way around this giant body of water, which would be approximately 10 plus miles, 10 to 12 miles. Or we could swim across this narrow channel that's only about a quarter of a mile. Now, this isn't drawn to scale, so forgive me for my poor illustration. I've done this in the wintertime when it was freezing conditions and the water temperature was in the 40s. In colder places where it gets really, really, really cold outside and the water temperature where it might be frozen over, obviously that's probably going to be a different situation. But around here, I know what I would do. I've done this in the wintertime and it is absolutely miserable. It is terrible, but it's still, I think, uh, debatable. It's pretty miserable, but it's still better than walking the 10, 12 plus miles around the lake. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how I would stage my gear, stow my gear to keep it dry, my clothing dry. And let's say it was colder temperatures. I would want to stow my clothing, strip all my clothing off basically down to my, my skivvies or my birthday suit perhaps uh, so I can keep that dry and then stage it in my bag. And we'll talk about how exactly to do that right now. This time of year, the weather's warm. The water is really nice. It's really comfortable to swim in. And it really wouldn't matter if you got your clothes wet, honestly. I mean, with the exception that it just takes a long time to dry and you might get chafing and stuff like that because of it. But you're not gonna get hypothermia most likely, even if you're soaking wet. Wearing your clothing is gonna slow you down. It's gonna add a lot of resistance and it's gonna make it much more difficult to swim. So I would still recommend stripping down a little bit. And this is how I would do it. I would take my pack off. And I would take a drum liner, a heavy duty garbage bag like this one. You can do dry bags, you can do all that stuff, that's fine. They're just more expensive and they don't necessarily work any better than this. So just a big trash bag. This is a 42 gallon trash bag and it's gonna be more than big enough for my entire pack, plus all my clothing. Now, if the weather was cold, so a few years ago I did this in the winter time and I made a lot of mistakes. I learned from those mistakes. If the weather was cold, it's really important to stage all of your dry clothing in the bag effectively so you can get to it really, really easily. And you wanna stow it in the order that you're gonna be putting it on. So socks first, underwear, pants, and then your top. So I would make sure that I stage it in that order to make it much, much easier because if you are in really, really cold water, and let's say it was a necessity to swim across cold water, you wanna make sure that you can have that stuff easily accessible because your brain's probably not going to be working really really very well if you're miserably cold in the pack right on top making it easily accessible easy to put on if i was cold i want to be careful of not sitting it on rocks and stuff like that because yeah it is again it's a garbage bag it's not indestructible All right, now this is a pro tip right here because I've learned it the hard way. What you wanna do in order to use this, this will make more sense once I get in the water, but in order to use this as a sort of a flotation device and to be able to kind of ride on top of it, especially if the water's cold and you wanna get your core temperature, core body out of the water, you need to take a little bit of air out of this bag. You don't want it to be this giant big balloon that sits on top of the water because you won't be able to get on top of it. You'll just end up tipping over. So take most of the air out because there's going to be plenty of air in the backpack itself. So take most of the air out of this thing. And something like that is what you want. Plenty of air. It's going to be plenty buoyant and it will float. Next pro tip. Like I mentioned before, it's going to be cold, right? If it is the winter time. And what happened was my hands would not function. I wasn't able to untie the knot. I just tied, I tied an overhand knot in the top of my bag and I couldn't get it undone, right? And this is where a, like a roll top dry bag would come in really, really handy. But if you're using a bag like this, um, a tying a hard knot in there, one that won't leak is really, really difficult to untie with really numb, very cold hands. So what I would suggest is that you either tie it up with a piece of paracord or use some sort of band like this one, this rubber band, this ranger band. What you'll do, what I would recommend that you do is twist it 
twist the bag up nice and tight and then gooseneck it over like this like that right there and then take your band and really securely put it over top of it multiple times and get it good and tight not to the point where it's impossible to get off but it's this will be much much easier to get off than um than uh just just tying a big knot and you can always cut it that's a thing too if you're not planning on reusing the bag all right so i've wrapped it up nice and tight but i left this top part kind of near the top so i can just take it off really really easily even with numb fingers So you see what I mean about it being plenty buoyant, even though I got most of the air out, it still rides so high up on top of the water. But, and like I said before, if you do this big giant balloon thing and you try to get on top of it to get yourself up out of the water and rest maybe perhaps, you're just gonna topple over and it doesn't work very well. So get most of the air out and then you can ride on top of the bag just like that. And it makes it super easy. And if you've got a long ways to swim, this is only a quarter mile, which is not that big a deal. I'm a I'm not really a good swimmer, actually. I take that back, but 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 I'm an I'm an okay swimmer. I'm good at not drowning. Let's put it that way. I can I can swim quite a ways. Um, so a quarter mile is really not that big a deal. So that's another point to bring up. Swimming is a, is a skill that you shouldn't take for granted. Let, let's say you're on the swim team in high school, but it's been 30 years since you've taken a lap. It might surprise you at how difficult swimming a quarter mile is. So I would suggest that you challenge yourself regular and mix up your training a little bit don't just hike and walk and run because potentially you might have to swim a little ways when i was just a baby i was out in the gulf of mexico with my grandparents i think my mom and dad were there i'm pretty sure they were there um and we a storm came upon us and ended up getting our boat stuck on top of a sandbar big storm apparently and we were stranded there essentially and the way the story was told to me my grandfather had to swim across several short distances across you know through the mangroves and stuff like that in order to get to a civilization where he could contact help and and get us out of there everybody else was was stuck on that boat my dad couldn't swim for example and uh so everybody else was stranded there and just waiting and they were at the mercy of of the weather and, and whatever came their way and they were totally reliant upon a strong swimmer, my grandfather, to, to make it and, and get help. And that story has kind of stuck with me as I've, as I've gotten older and it just reminds me to always be prepared regardless of, of whatever situations you think may or may not happen. Just diversify your training as much as you can so you're prepared for whatever may come. So probably the easiest thing to do and the simplest thing to do is just to ride on top of your pack until you get to your destination. Just kind of frog kick your way to all the way across the, the lake. But you can also, if it works better for you, you can take some sort of leash, like a piece of paracord, tie it to your, your pack, your bag, and then make some sort of loop to go over your shoulder, over, around the neck and over the shoulder, so you can drag the bag. I would tie a bowline knot in the end, like so. And then I would take the rest of the, the cordage and go through my loop. And then I've got a slip loop that I can lock down on that gooseneck that I did on my pack. You could go around the whole thing too. I mean, I guess that would, that would work. You could take this big loop and you could go over top of the whole pack. Kind of like that. And then just cinch it down. And then this end, I'm gonna make myself a nice big loop. I'm not gonna pull it tight or anything, just keep it loose. And that will go over the shoulder. Let's say this is the distance that I wanna swim, not that far. I could easily make it just by riding on top of my pack like this and frog kicking my way across. 
If I want to swim a little bit faster and I, I'm not worried about submerging my entire body and getting colder perhaps, then I can strap that, that lanyard, that string across my shoulder and I can just swim normally. Now I'm not a good swimmer. I've only been moderately proficient in one style of swimming and that is the side stroke or the rescue stroke or combat rescue stroke. There's several names for it. It's the only one that I'm good at and I chose to get good at that one because it's the most efficient and it's the one that you can do for the longest. Um, freestyle swimming is, is going to be faster and some people are really, really good at that, but I am not. I am terrible at it. I can't do any of the other ones like the breast strokes and all that efficiently. So the side stroke is where it's at. And if I could recommend one that you learn and get good at, that's it because you can do it for a long, long time once you get good at it. This is not the video where you learn how to do that, by the way. I'm definitely not a swim instructor. Get some lessons, watch some videos, learn how to do it, and practice in a swimming pool or something like that. It's probably going to be the easiest. And the beauty of this is if I do get tired and I get a little bit gassed, I can just crawl right up on top of my pack again and catch my breath. So we've made it to the other side. We can pull out our dry clothes and be on our way. So potentially a 10, 20 minute swim versus a five, six or more hour long hike. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure you leave in the comments. Any comment will do. Very grateful for those. Thanks a lot, guys.